Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the Legion 5 Pro. This is the latest in their mid-range line of gaming laptops. This one has an AMD processor on board. We're going to be taking a closer look at this and what it's all about in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point on this will vary based on configuration. It looks like this one is going to start at around $1,600 and go up from there. I do not know at this point what the one we're looking at will cost because I think this one might have a few extra features beyond the base model. Now inside, we've got an AMD Ryzen 7, a 5800H, that is with the new Zen 3 architecture, 8 cores, 16 threads. It has an RTX 3070 GPU from NVIDIA with 8 gigabytes of onboard video memory, and this is running at the 140 watt TGP. Uh, they're not calling these Max-Q anymore, and it's up to the manufacturers to figure out how they want to implement Max-Q features. And again, uh, this one's going at 140 watts. Our unit here has 16 gigabytes of RAM DDR4-3200, and they have a 1 terabyte PCI Express NVMe inside. Uh, you can upgrade this, and I'll show you the insides in a few minutes. Now, the display is really nice. It's a 16-inch WQXGA 2560 by 1600. It is IPS, good viewing angles on it as you can see. Uh, it's not a touch display and you can see how far the display goes back on here. Now the display runs at 165 hertz with a three millisecond response rate. I didn't see all that much motion blurring going on when fast motion was on screen. It also supports NVIDIA G-Sync, which is great. Additionally, it has HDR support. It is certified for Visa Display HDR 400, and it also works with Dolby Vision. And a little bit earlier, I tested it out with Netflix, and it was able to switch itself into Dolby Vision mode, so that was good. Now, these laptops have been used by creative professionals as well because they're portable and powerful. You've got a big GPU and a really beefy CPU, and that makes it a very good editing platform for video. It works great for photo editing. And I use these kinds of laptops for remote video production with my vMix live production software. And OBS, of course, will run nicely on this too. And some of the display features are geared to those creative professionals, namely the aspect ratio here. This is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which means the display is a little bit higher vertically than what you might see in a 16 by nine display. So you can fit more on the screen, great for document and photo editing, that was nice to see. Additionally, it is covering 100% of sRGB and they also have it certified uh, for Pantone X or the x Right, I should say, certification. Uh, so it does uh, meet some of the standards that a creative professional might be looking for while also being pretty good at playing games too. Now gaming laptops tend to weigh more than non-gaming laptops and this one is coming in at about 5.4 pounds. Uh, that is roughly 2.45 kilograms. So you'll definitely feel this in your bag a lot more than an Ultrabook. Additionally, you have to cart around the power supply. These things just keep getting bigger. This is a 300 watt power supply to give the laptop what it needs to power that CPU and GPU at full performance. Now I'm quite pleased with the build quality on this. Uh, one of the things that I've liked about the Legion laptops is that they're fairly compact and the Legion 5s have typically all been plastic, but this one integrates metal. So the top of the case here and the bottom are both aluminum and everything just comes together really nicely. There's not a lot of gaps anywhere. You're not feeling any flex in the casing as you're holding the laptop. It really is nice and compact and feels very high quality. There's a nice little lip here on the front so you can very easily grab the display and get it put into place. The keyboard deck here is plastic along with the bezel of the display, but it doesn't feel cheap. Uh, there is a webcam here at the top. It is a 720p webcam. I'll give you a look at its uh, image there. Not bad, uh, kind of your basic webcam, but the good news is that prior versions of the Legion laptops used to put the webcam down here, so it was nice to see them be able to stick it up on the top. Now, Lenovo has put physical shutters in place on many of their laptops, but they couldn't fit that on this one. So to turn off the camera, 
they integrated a physical switch here at the bottom that will disconnect the camera. So when you flick that off, the camera goes off, and if you flick it back on, of course, it will return. Uh, so you won't see anything blocking the lens, but if you uh, turn that switch off, the camera will be deactivated. Now, I'm very pleased with the keyboard on it. You have very deep travel to these keys. You get a lot of nice tactile feedback as a result of that deep travel, so it's really nice for typing and for playing games. It has a number pad, but the number keys are a little smaller than the rest of the keyboard, but I think for typing, it's a really good platform here, really uh, high quality. Now, this is an RGB keyboard, but it's not all that bright under my studio lights, so I'll give you another shot here of what it looks like in a darker environment. And it's limited in its RGB controls, so you can control the keyboard lights here on the Lenovo Vantage software. There's a lighting section on the lower uh, right-hand portion of the screen where you can set everything up. And as I go to the static mode here, you can see that it only allows you to set the RGB in zones and not by individual keys. Uh, typically, individual key RGB is limited to their higher-end Legion uh, 7 uh, laptop, but not on the Legion 5. And the trackpad on this feels pretty nice as well. It's pretty accurate. You can actually click on it pretty high up, so I'm still registering clicks even above its center point. It's got a nice firm feel to it, and it's tracking, again, very accurately. Uh, this, though, does not have a fingerprint reader or any kind of facial recognition features built in, so you will be logging in with your passcode or password or perhaps with a YubiKey or something, but there's no biometrics on this one. Now, there are a number of ports on this laptop, but like other Legion 5 laptops, there is no Thunderbolt on this one. So on the left-hand side here, we've got a USB Type-C port. This supports USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, but not the new USB 4 standard that might support some of the faster Thunderbolt data transfers. Uh, but this will, again, go up to 10 gigabits per second with that uh, Gen 2 on there. Additionally, this supports display output, but not power input. You have a headphone microphone jack over here. On the back, you've got a bunch more ports, and I've always liked how they've laid these out on the back. Uh, so we've got gigabit Ethernet here. We have another USB Type-C port. This will support power delivery out to a device that's connected, uh, but does not support power in. Again, you have a big power adapter on this, and there's no USB-C power adapter that can deliver the kind of power that this needs right now. Uh, you also have some more USB 3 ports back here. These are USB 3.2 Gen 1, uh, which means that these are running at 5 gigabits per second. So you've got one here, another one there, and a third one here. You have HDMI out, and your power connector goes in over there. And then on the right-hand side, you've got that switch to disable the webcam, and then you've got another USB 3.2 Gen 1 port there at 5 gigabits per second. You definitely want to keep the airflow going here, so keep this bottom portion clear along with the sides and rear. It does have a good amount of fan noise when it's under load, which is typical for laptops like this. Uh, but when it's sitting idle, it's generally fairly quiet, although you might feel some airflow moving out of it. And again, the key is to keeping the airflow free here so you prevent overheating. So let's take a quick look at the internals now. It was a little hard to get the case off because it's so tightly constructed, but I was able to get my spudger uh, into a little spot here on the lower left-hand side that allowed me to very gently get everything detached. And once you do, this whole plate comes off really easily here. So that was uh, nice to see. This is something we've seen on other Legion models, too. Once you get things moving, it's pretty easy to get in there. Uh, you've got a very robust cooling system. You have two RAM slots here under this shield, so you can upgrade the RAM. And you also have two storage slots. You've got one here for an NVMe SSD and another one here for the uh, one that it ships with. So you can add a second drive to it if you want. Additionally, the network card here is replaceable. This is the Wi-Fi 6 adapter, so if you ever wanted to swap that out, uh, you could get at that as well, and you can see the battery here along the bottom. And as I was reassembling the computer here, I noticed another little detail. This is a piece of plastic that I guess must stabilize the middle of the uh, bottom portion of the casing, and it has a little bit of printing on there that says the Arc Reactor of Legion. Kind of a neat little detail. Now when you have the laptop plugged in, the Legion logo here will light up. 
I don't believe you can change the color of this. I couldn't find a setting to do that, but it was a nice touch and kind of harkens back to some of their earlier models. Uh, the sound quality isn't spectacular out of this from its speakers. You've got two downward firing speakers on the left and right hand side of the unit here. Uh, the audio is kind of angled downwards, so whatever surface the laptop is sitting on will impact the quality of the audio. You do, though, get decent stereo separation. It does support the Nihemic uh, 3D audio for gamers. So if you have a game that supports some of that spatial audio, that should come through. But you'll have a better experience hooking up a nice pair of gaming headphones, either through that headphone jack or over Bluetooth. Now, battery life on a gaming laptop while you're gaming is never great. This one is no exception to that rule. Probably an hour or two if you're playing a AAA title, maybe a little bit more if it's less demanding. But there are some settings to adjust the power consumption for doing things other than gaming, like email, web browsing, and word processing. So you might be able to get five or six hours out of this in a work-related uh, kind of activity. And you can manage that on the uh, Lenovo Vantage software here. They've got a control panel on the right-hand side for making those adjustments. Uh, right now, I've got hybrid mode disabled, but if you want to get a better balance of power consumption, enabling that hybrid mode will be one of the things that you can do to improve your battery longevity. And what this will do is disable the NVIDIA GPU when you don't need it. Uh, but right now, because I have that mode disabled, all of the graphics are coming through the NVIDIA GPU and the onboard graphics are not being used. I have overdrive here enabled, which allows for the display to run at its best performance. And because we're plugged in at the moment, I have this thermal mode set to performance, which gets us the absolute best that this laptop can do. And that's what we uh, did a bulk of our game testing on. Now, if you hit the function key here and Q, you can change the thermal mode. And it's a little bit hard to see under the studio lights here, but the power button right now is lit up red to indicate that we're in that power, uh, the performance mode here. But if I hit function Q, uh, it will turn blue now. And what this means is that it's in its lower power consuming mode, which means the fan won't make as much noise and will be able to get a little bit more longevity out of the battery. Uh, if you leave it on its white mode, which is the auto setting, it will try to figure out what you're looking to do. But again, my advice is that if you're using this to get as much performance as possible out of it, plug it in, turn off hybrid mode, and leave the computer in performance mode to get the most out of it. Let's take a look now at some games running on the device, and then we'll look at its benchmark scores. So I wanted to see what would happen with Red Dead Redemption 2 here at the absolute highest settings at the native resolution of the display. And as you can see here, we are in the 25 to 30 frames per second territory with everything cranked up. So you'll probably want to reduce settings a bit on this game, uh, but there are many others out there that will run quite nicely. So here is The Witcher 3 running at the native resolution of the display, 2560 by 1600. We were getting between 90 and 100 frames per second on this one. It looked pretty nice and played pretty nice too. Uh, this is GTA 5, and we were running this at the absolute highest graphic settings, again, uh, with the native resolution of the display dialed in. And here we were getting in, a, in DirectX 11 mode between 40 and 65 frames per second as we were driving around. So we could probably tweak this down a bit to get a much more solid frame rate, but we wanted to see uh, what it would do maxed out, and there you go. Uh, we also loaded up Call of Duty Warzone. Uh, yes, the guy, uh, Jake, who works for me here, gets paid to play these games. Not a bad gig. Uh, he was getting between 90 and 120 frames per second. Highest settings, again, uh, set to the native resolution of the display. And we also have Fortnite here. This is running at, again, the native resolution with epic settings. And we were getting between 80 and 125 frames per second, depending on what was going on on the ground here. So that's one of the reasons why having a G-Sync display uh, really helps out with this laptop, but altogether pretty decent gaming performance out of this. And again, you could hook this up to a 4K display if you want. You'll have to obviously adjust those settings to accommodate that higher resolution, but all of the outputs here will support a 4K 60 hertz display. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 10,406, and you can see how this laptop performs versus the a uh, laptop I own, the Y740, uh, that is running with the 2080 Max-Q. A nice bump in performance here. 
Uh, and it's actually pretty competitive against my gaming desktop PC upstairs with a 2080 Ti. That one's still besting the laptop here, but check out the CPU score. It's coming in at around the same uh, performance as my i9 9900K upstairs. So I was very pleased with what I was seeing out of this AMD processor. And it also seems to hold its own on virtual reality. We ran the VR Mark Orange Room test. There we got a score of 12,484. It was able to sustain a frame rate of 272 frames per second. Typically, you want to get at least 90 frames per second on that test, and this one certainly does that. So I think a lot of the low-end VR titles will run great on here, and I think some of the more recent ones that are a bit more demanding should be able to hit that frame rate with the right settings adjustments here too. So altogether, great for gaming and great for VR as well. And on the 3D Mark stress test, which measures how well the system handles itself under heavy sustained load, we got a passing grade of 97.9%. You can also see what temperatures the CPU and GPU were at at the conclusion of that test. So you should not see any significant thermal throttling on this one, even over extended gaming sessions. And I think that is due to the pretty robust cooling system that we saw on this thing a little while ago. So altogether, this is a really nicely performing gaming laptop from Lenovo. I love the build quality and the uh, 16 by 10 display here. The AMD processor is performing quite well along with that 3070 GPU. And altogether, this is just a really nicely refined gaming laptop that just looks and feels great and performs really nicely as well. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.